one and we're rolling my friend we are seven days away from the trade deadline in major league baseball i've already seven pre-ordered days, my juan soto jersey it's great <laughs> that's great <laughs> There are so many possibilities in the next week with so many of these contending teams. It's going to be a fun one. That is to uh, say the least. Scott. Hello, everybody. Trade deadline is a week away, but like big trades can happen at any minute now. Yeah. Like we're in the window where. This is the window, baby. You're not not jumping (laughs) in early at this point. You know, like Jays needed a starting pitcher a month ago. Were they willing to overpay to. We're not in that period anymore. Like, this is the time where now it's just you have a good offer, they accept, and a tweet goes out. So it's very exciting the next week. Now, there may be some teams that really push it right to the deadline trying to get the absolute most value, but you're you're dead on, man. Like, this is... This is Action Week. Things are going to happen. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the walk-off. This is the mailbag, and holy cow, did we have a lot of interaction over the last week. Thank you so much to everyone who constantly is dropping a comment in the YouTube, or if you're listening on audio, I'm always so impressed with how many of you take the time to go to another platform, Twitter or Instagram, and, and DM us. Or shoot us a message. Very, very cool. You can, of course, follow us on Twitter at Walk Off Podcast. On Instagram, the Walk Off Podcast. Our Discord. We talk about it every single mailbag, but it really is a animal of itself, if you will. The link for that is in the show notes. It's always free to join. We've got pushing 200 members at this point, and it grows every single week. So a big thank you to everyone in Discord that makes that cog turn if you will and then of course a tip of the hat to all of our patreon adam's got the list go to her patreon.com slash the walk off podcast big thank you to david abraham michael sarah john simon rashid joshua jeremy ian dunedin bob and john and wyatt who have joined in the last week so big thanks to everybody supporting us over there uh we do movie reviews we do early access to all of our interviews we do contests for giveaways this jose barrios jersey we're going to give away at the end of august so all you have to do for that join the patreon and then send us a message and just say why you want the jersey it's a very low threshold uh to qualify you can just say i want the jersey because blue is my favorite color and you're in just for legal reasons it can't be a raffle so it has to be a contest and then scott and i are going to judge the best answer so there you go it's a men extra large jose barrios jersey we're going to give away to our patreon uh on top of that we are donating five percent of our patreon income yes uh to the jays care foundation so scott do you want to talk just for a second about the craft island comedy festival and what the walk-off is going to be doing there and what you're going to be doing there i think that's a great idea and a good place for it so calgary I am involved in a company, a comedy company called Craft Island. And basically what we do is we work with craft breweries and we put on comedy shows around Alberta. And last year we had our inaugural Craft Island Comedy Festival in Calgary, where it's the biggest festival, comedy festival in Calgary. We're working with a pile of venues. It went really well, so we're doing it again this year. It's going to be September 22nd to 25th. Adam and I are going to be running a, I guess you'd say a fundraiser for Jay's Care Foundation. Yeah. We just would like to give back to the kids if we can. And so what we're going to do is throw a watch party on that Saturday, September 25th. The Jays are playing the Rays, I think it is. And we're going to have it in one of the breweries. We're not exactly sure on the venue quite yet, but all of that's being worked out in the next week. And then what we're going to do is have a watch party where we just all hang out, watch the Blue Jays, and then all of the ticket sales are going to go to Jays Foundation. So we figured we'd we'd contribute as well on our end. Very cool. So we're going to do that moving forward. Uh, 5% of our Patreon we are going to throw towards a good cause. Uh, This year we're going to put it towards the Jays Care Foundation. We'll see how that goes and uh, maybe just do that every year. Maybe do a different charity the following year. Who knows? But that's uh, you can rest easy knowing that a small portion of your donation is uh, 
going to the kids this year. So very cool there. Uh, Patreon.com slash the walk off podcast, $4 a month. Uh, couldn't be easier. And we appreciate everybody, whether you donate or not. So there you go. All right. Uh, mailbag. You ready? Let's get into it, buddy. I know there's lots this, this week. Okay. Before we do this, I just want to say, as far as the trade deadline goes, for real, like any minute now, we could get stuff. Yeah. Because we're at the point where, sure, teams like the Nationals are going to want to squeeze every penny they can out of Juan Soto. But the other trades are going to happen where a team is like not in on Juan Soto or can't afford to wait to the last minute to add that left handed bat. And they're like, we need somebody. We can't sit around twiddling our thumbs waiting for the Nationals to take someone or to pick us. And then maybe in this game of musical chairs, we're the last one out and we don't get a left-handed bat or we don't get a Luis Castillo. So we've got to go early on a Montas or like, so deals are going to get done, man. Deals are going to get done this week. Very exciting. Agreed. Okay. So I've been uh, roasted in the past, I suppose, for my technical prowess on this show, namely not hitting record for one. <laughs> uh, seventh yeah, inning that's... sound check, I believe, yes. is a uh, trending hashtag in our Discord. <laughs> uh, maybe a, an idea for some new merch down the road. Seventh inning sound check has a nice ring to it. Um, so I had someone reach out to me on Instagram. So Devin messaged me on Instagram. And offered some help with the technical side of things. Offered to streamline the process, help with the audio side of things. Uh, which, very big thank you to uh, to Devin for that one. Um, some good news and some bad news. Okay, on the one hand, we, we sat down, we went over the specs of the computer that I'm running everything off of. And he was quite blown away with what we're able to extract from this shitty old computer. <laughs> so the fact that we even are able to do a podcast like this with the overlays, with the video chats, with all the different features, the screen sharing that we're doing now, all the different you know bells and whistles with a tacky term, but whatever it is what it is, blown away that we're able to even achieve what we're able to do uh, from a technical standpoint. So, I mean, I felt good about that. Yeah. Until... Bad news is we're maxed out. <laughs> Bad news is it's not going to get any better. So with us trying to improve everybody's viewing and listening experience, uh, the only way to do that, unfortunately, is to do a much overdue upgrade to our system. Essentially, we need a new, bigger and better computer. Uh, when Scott and I first started doing this podcast, uh, it's three years ago now. Uh, this was well, enough. It's two years ago, as of ju- ju- as of July sixth. You, but you yes. count things differently than I do. <laughs> <laughs> We're in year three, so it's three We're in years. year three. It was three years ago. Yeah, yeah. 2020, 2021, 2022. No, two years, years, two weeks, three yeah. years, same thing. That's all right. Eight ninety nine is eight dollars in my books. Um, <laughs> anyways, wow, what a tangent we're going on here. Point being. Uh, When we started this show, it was only ever Scott and I. Sometimes we'd have uh, a guest for an interview, and that was about the... We weren't live streaming. We weren't doing screen shares. We weren't doing anything like this. Uh, And we've just now we're pushing pushing all of the the stuff too far. So I went out and I, uh, I spent the weekend getting some quotes on some upgrade packages uh, to get a proper computer for the video production side of things and and to be able to do all the live streaming the way we want to and not to have it lag and slow down and get choppy and have you know one person's connection be delayed where we're talking over each other all these things can be uh, removed but from the three different places that I went to the ballpark estimate for where we're going to need to be for our upgrade is around 1400 to 1500 dollars uh, to get things where they need to be so that we can give you the best uh, kind of content we have. So that ties back into Patreon, Scott, because uh, yeah. I'm broke. So we're going to be putting all of our Patreon money towards uh, upgrading our gear, 
big thank you to everybody who has contributed already. Uh, yes. As of today, we are 10% of the way towards that goal. So it adds up. Your $4 a month from 10 different people, you know, it all uh, adds up. Uh, Rashid was very generous and just went way above and beyond and contributed yeah, a massive lump sum, which we have uh, invested into like the, the boom arm that I'm using and upgraded mics and, and the uh, stream deck that we're using for scene, scene switching and all this sort of stuff. But a computer is definitely the next thing that we need to upgrade and Patreon, uh, we thank all the support there. So even if you don't care about the movie reviews or early access to the interviews or anything like that, if you do have $4 to spare, you're going to reap the rewards in the long run as it is going the to improve. the quality of the show will the improve with a new experience. computer. Exactly. And we know this. We're working on it. We had a big talk this morning about how we're going to put 95% of Patreon towards that. Of course, the other 5% going to Jay's care. So this isn't us sitting back and just throwing your $4 a month in the air and letting it rain down all over us as we celebrate our wealth. But uh, we do appreciate it, though. For what it's worth, I did suggest that I get to do that. And Scott said, no, we got to be productive with this money. So, <laughs> all right, there you go. Uh, the OnlyFans can wait. Uh, anyways, thank you to Devin for uh, reaching out to me and trying yes. to help. Uh, appreciate it. We've had countless offers in the past. And uh, we do appreciate everybody who's trying to help and offering their service or their expertise for free. Uh, unfortunately, we're just at the, that point where money is what's needed to take that next step. So, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, and thank you for sitting through that seven minute seminar. Uh, next one. <laughs> this is a real comment, uh, comes in from, uh, original blunt smoking in discord said, uh, I noticed that Horowitz played second base the other day. I like having, uh, giving him another infield position to go along with first base and left field. I wonder if this is for our benefit or if we are just showcasing him in other positions for a possible trade. So I'll pull up Spencer Horowitz's stats. Friend of the show, Spencer Horowitz, by the way. Friend of the show. We actually got to sit down with Spencer over the off season and had a really good chat with him. We'll actually put the link to that interview in the show notes here. So if you would like to catch up with Spencer Horowitz and see what he's all about, it was a really fun little interview there. This is a dude who's a natural lefty, too, which you don't see all the time in baseball. Throws left, catches left, bats left, just as left as they come. His big downfall in this organization is that he is a first baseman. And if you look at the depth chart, obviously anyone playing first base behind Vladimir Guerrero Jr. isn't going to break through on this team. So it is really good to see that he is trying really hard to become more versatile in the field. He was getting some reps at left field. He started this year in double A with New Hampshire. He got the call up to Buffalo just recently and is now playing second base, first base, and left field with the Buffalo Bison. This is a 25-year-old who has shown some real talent with that lefty bat. Could he get a call up in September? This is not an impossibility, especially if the Blue Jays wind up truly focusing on pitching specifically at the trade deadline and don't find a lefty bat to bring in. Maybe they're out there on the market and they just don't think that there's someone that is worth spending the prospect capital on that is going to improve this team over a guy like Kevin Biggio or Zach Collins. So is Spencer Horowitz possibly a better lefty bat off the bench than Zach Collins is the question. And I think he very well could be given an opportunity to show that he is. And he's having a very good season. Uh, if you want to go over the stats here, Adam, for everyone on audio and for those of you on YouTube, it's up right now. There you go. Um, so Spencer Horowitz started in double A, as you mentioned. Uh, he played 70 games there. Recently promoted to Triple A, and he's played 14 games in Triple A so far. So in Double A, he was hitting 297 uh, with an on-base percentage of 413 and a slugging of 517 for an OPS of 930. Just really good. Dominant. Dominant. Uh, since getting promoted to Triple A, 14 game sample size, his uh, batting average has actually improved. 
he's hitting 316 now, um, but his on base percentage has dropped to 381. So still a really good on base percentage and a 509 slugging percentage for an OPS of 890. So very good. Two home runs already through 14 games. He had 10 through 70 in uh, Double A. So he's a left-handed bat that's hitting for average. Has some like real power. And another thing about Spencer Horowitz that you may remember from last year, some of you, is that he actually did break the Northwest League and the High A League on on uh, for the Vancouver Canadians for consecutive hits. He had 28 hits, or uh, sorry, 28, 28 games days, 28 games with a hit in a row to break the record, which is so incredible. And he's a 25-year-old, so he's not incredibly young he's a guy who maybe can handle a jump up in a pressure situation in september where the jays really are looking for a guy who can come off the bench and show some acumen with that bat from the left side we might see spencer horowitz in a blue jays uniform this year be very cool great comment by original blunt smoking by the way (laughs) i love that name (laughs) Uh, (laughs) all right uh next one comes from ian uh my new favorite quote if the stats doesn't adjust for weather, I don't care. Uh, yes. That's an Adam Mac tonight. original, if you my, will. <laughs> my take on war and all other advanced stats. Uh, what is the stat that does account for weather? Is it FIP? Oh, I don't know. I feel like there is really, one that's like really adjusted for... Really put me for, on the spot for, here, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Maybe it was just when uh, at the start of the year when they were talking about home run rate is down through like April and May and they're like, you know, right. relative to the previous seasons and adjusted for weather adjusted home run rate weather. is like 5% instead of 4%. And, you know, and that's accounting for sunny days versus the extra rainy days that we had last year. So that's uh, my sarcastic take on war and all advanced stats at this point is if it doesn't adjust for weather, I don't care. Uh, but Ian later added to that idea uh, in Discord and said, here's another merch idea for you. A cartoon of Adam as a TV weatherman standing in front of a weather map full of advanced stats and him rejoicing, finally! <laughs> and I love that so much. That's such a I great idea. I love that idea, idea too. Yeah. Uh, we are running a merch contest. Uh, I don't know if that's the right word for it. Uh, bad tacos is a term we use when speculating about injuries. Uh, on this show as to not jinx anybody or I guess more importantly not be blamed for a jinx yes uh so bad tacos is a term of endearment on this show we have uh, a contest going I think until the end of August next 2nd, week you said. yeah so until yes. trade deadline uh so if you have a doodle or a picture of a bad taco uh, get that into us uh, through discord uh, DM us on Twitter, Instagram, whatever. Um, and then that is going to be our affer- official uh, merch for Bad Tacos. That'll be our first piece of merch. And if your design is the chosen design, you're going to get a free piece of merch with that design on it. So pretty cool for you. Um, once we have the design picked out, we're going to run it through uh, Oh My Apparel, a uh, friend of the show, Team Oh My. Yes. And that will be up through pre sales only. So. Uh, we are not going to have an inventory of T-shirts that we'll be selling for 15 bucks. It will all be, you pick your size, you pick whether you want a hoodie or a T-shirt or a coffee mug or whatever the case may be. Uh, get those in by the deadline, and then we'll uh, we'll make a big batch order for the three people that want it. Okay, next one is about Ross Stripling. So we actually have two, we have quite a few comments about Ross Stripling. So we'll just read all the comments, and then we'll... We'll uh, talk Ross Stripling for a bit. Uh, okay. So Dolce Morris said, After seeing Stripling be burned by the shift yet again in his last start, costing him a run, or us a run, uh, I tried to find what I could on shifting stats. Although I couldn't find specific Ross Stripling shifting stats. That's a... Say that 10 times fast. <laughs> Ross Stripling, Stripling shifting, shifting stats. stats. <laughs> <laughs> I found team stats on shifting, and the Blue Jays shift the most of all teams in the MLB. Against lefty batters, they rank sixth in the MLB for success, limiting hitters to a uh, 288 WOBA 
And against righty batters, they rank 23rd in the MLB, elevating hitters to a 336 WOBA. This equals the regular season WOBA of Yankees and Dodgers hitters collectively. So definitely have more success with the shift against lefties than we do against against righties. Um, Great stats, Dolchimerus, by the way. Really interesting to see how much the Blue Jays are shifting. It kind of surprised me when it was pointed out that they are the top shifting team in all of baseball, especially when you consider the fact that as of next year, most likely the shift is going to be banned or at least altered in what Mm -hmm. you can do on the field with where you position your players. So the Jays really going all in here, working very well on lefties and not so well on righties. And I wonder if you can look at that stat and maybe shift less against right-handed hitters. These stats are available. I mean, this and this is like uh, maybe encapsulates my beef that I have with advanced stats is at a certain point. I mean, the information's good, but also there's always like more factors that you can add to your your metrics that influence whether it's a good number or a bad number, right? Like shifting is good, so let's shift. But then when you add the split of lefties and righties, it's like, okay, well, don't shift against righties anymore. Or you add the metric of like, well, Stripling as an individual, we shouldn't shift with him because it actually has the opposite effect. Like, I don't know. It's just weird. You you keep adding these factors into your calculation and you can really (laughs) manipulate the numbers to point out anything you want. I don't know. It's, It's a weird... I have beef with stats. Let's just look well, at that. Well, th- I mean, I think the shift is a pretty divisive subject. I know that there's a lot of Blue Jays fans that hate how much the Jays shift and bring it up all the time when they get beat on a shift. And then there are there are a, a number of the fan base out there that love how much the Blue Jays shift and love seeing that fourth outfielder out in the – uh, you know, the the third baseman hauled out into the, or I, I'm sorry, Espinal being hauled out as the fourth outfielder and going with a, a three infielder position and watching, you know, the positioning. It, 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 I don't know how I feel about it, man. I, I know I haven't really said anything here, but it's just one of those things with baseball that the front office obviously believes that in the end it's going to work out or they wouldn't be playing the field this way. Look, and they do have access to numbers that we just simply don't have as much as like fan graphs and like all these sites do their best. They don't have the same level of information that we do uh, or that, sorry, that the teams do. So there's even like calculations to be made of like, okay, well, did he get burned by a hit up the, through the hole where if we weren't shifting, the shortstop would have been like, yes, but also is that better than a home run that maybe the shift took away because someone isn't swinging for the fences? Like, I don't know. There's just, there are a lot of factors. Absolutely. It's It's an interesting going up against the shift changes the hitters approach. And maybe that is where the value comes in like a mass sample size. I don't know. It's interesting, but, uh, I hate it all the same. Uh, just from like an entertainment standpoint, I want to see the shift go. Never mind from like a competitive advantage or disadvantage. I just. That's fair. And you are probably going to get your wish there, Adam. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Um, so kind of related to Ross Stripling uh, because you named him in the tweet. So that's how it's related. Yes. Uh, you tweeted and I'll bring it up on screen here. Um, Is it crazy to give Stripling a qualifying offer? Uh and then we did get a few comments. You said you got some DMs, uh, but this one in particular is the one we're going with. So from Jay's All Day uh, DM'd us and said, Hey, guys, always love the show. Just saw your tweet about stripling, and I'm a little confused. What's going on? So yesterday, Jeff Passon came out, and that was the – I did the retweet quote yeah. tweet. Yeah, look at And you. basically Passon – yeah, that's advanced, right? Oh, yeah. Advanced tweeting. Advanced tweeting. Passon came out and basically announced that the MLB, or sorry, MLB and MLBPA 
did not come to an agreement on the international draft. So let's go back, okay? Because there's a lot of folks who are casual fans that aren't huge nerds and don't know the ins and outs of the collective bargaining agreement, and you're probably better off for it. So let's let's tackle it from March. A lot of you remember, obviously, that MLB and MLBPA were at loggerheads. They wound up postponing the season over this, the international draft, and redoing it into almost a more cohesive draft with the draft that they do with um, American and Canadian players. Yeah. So right now it's set up as all international. They would like to do an international draft. Right now it's international free agency. And so they're going out and they're literally signing these guys like Vladdy was signed at 15, right? You need to be 16 to sign, but there's deals in place by the time these kids are 14, 15 in the Dominican, throughout Latin America, even overseas. Sam Roberts is a good example out of uh, the Netherlands. So these guys are signed... It's, it's why when you look at Lourdes Gurriel Jr.'s contract, he was one of these international free agent signings. They signed Gurriel, and that's why he still is under contract for $3 million or $3.5 million plus his ARB, ARB mm-hmm. whatever that's going to wind up being, and has a really good contract till the end of 2024. MLB wanted... T- this system to stay the same, but MLBPA wanted a draft to, in a lot of cases, the draft, there's a lot of downfalls to it, but there's also a lot of advantages to making sure that some of these kids aren't taken advantage of at a, at a youth at a very young age. So this is why this has been kind of a bit of a sticking point. Mm-hmm. And what they wound up doing in March is deciding, or I should say even early April, they decided let's kick this cat down the road <laughs> to take one from Adam. Yeah. And we're going to tie in the qualifying offer, something that was another thing in the collective bargaining agreement that both sides were argumentative about and were at loggerheads about. So what they did was they decided we're going to put a deadline of July 24th to figure out this international draft. If they don't, the qualifying offer is then put back into the collective bargaining agreement, and it goes back to what we've seen over the last few years with the the qualifying offer, which means when you're a player, your team has the option to offer you a qualifying offer when you're a free agent. It's somewhere around that $18.5 million range, I think. And so the player has the option of taking that one year $18.5 million deal or hitting the open market. And then there are draft picks attached to that player when other free or when other organizations sign the player. So we saw that happen with the Blue Jays with Robbie Ray. We saw it happen with the Blue Jays last year when Marcus Simeon, Marcus Simeon went to Texas. And that's why the Blue Jays had so many draft picks in the second round this year was because mm-hmm. of those qualifying picks. Yep. So what happened is the deadline came and went and now It is back to the old system with the qualifying offer because they never came up with an agreement on the international draft. So when I tweeted on top of Jeff Passan's statement about this, do they qualify Ross Stripling? What I meant was, do the Blue Jays, has Ross Stripling done well enough for the Blue Jays to offer him that $18 million over one year And then still try to sign him maybe more long-term for a two- or three-year deal. But if they don't and another team gets in there and does it, then they get draft pick compensation. This is very similar to the Steven Matz talks Mm -hmm. last August. That Matz was doing just well enough that you're like, do you risk it? Do you risk bringing Steven Matz back and him making more than he deserves for one year? Steven Matz is probably a 13 to $14 million guy. And I mean, he did get that, what was it, $44 million deal over four years, broke down to 11 and a half mil a year or something like that. So the Jays opted not to offer a qualifying offer on Steven Matz. But does Ross Stripling have the value where maybe it is a good idea to qualify, to, to give him a qualifying offer? I don't think his value is quite that high, and it would definitely be an overpay for one year of Ross Stripling. 
But with how desperate MLB teams are for quality pitching, and this is one thing about Ross Stripling, that there's so few of his ilk out there, is that he can bounce back and forth between the bullpen and starting rotation and it not completely and utterly ruin him as a pitcher. Because we watched we watched this Blue Jays organization try to do this, what they're doing with Ross Stripling with other guys before. G- GB Agini comes to mind where, you know, he was really good in the pen and then they're like, let's move him up to starter. And then he didn't do so well and they yo-yoed him back down. So there's not a lot of guys who can do that and there is some very tangible value in Ross Stripling in that aspect. Uh, yeah. Here's some things against Ross Stripling, if I can just... And I love what he's done for this team. But some reasons I don't think he's going to get a big payday on the free agency market. Uh, for one, he's 32 this year. Yes, he is. Um, he'll be 33 by next spring. He's never really been a full-time starter. Uh, I'm looking back to 2018 with the Dodgers, the most innings pitched in one season, 122. Mm -hmm. Uh, Other than that, he has two seasons of like, like his rookie season, exactly 100 innings. Last year with Toronto, 101 innings, pitched a lot in the bullpen. Uh, This year, he's he's got 78 and a third, so he will probably set a new career high in innings pitched. Um, that being said, it's not going to be 170 innings. It's not going to be pushing 200 innings. Um, so he doesn't have that pedigree of being a starter and is as valuable as it is to have a guy who can be flexible between mm-hmm. the bullpen and starting. I just don't think the way teams are managed is that they're managed um, and rosters are constructed in a way where you want to have uh, insurance policy in place. And I, I think that's where his biggest value is, is like, hey, if one of your real starters goes down, he can fill in. And wouldn't that be nice? You know, it's like getting the extended warranty on your TV. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like I just spent two thousand bucks on a it's TV. A Do I want to spend another yeah. three hundred, like in case this breaks. Like, I don't know. I just don't see a team offering him like mega dollars to be a starter when he's never done it before. I not never done you. it before, but never done it like on a full season scale. And he's yes. thirty. He'll be thirty three next year. So the idea of like, yeah, we'll just take this thirty three year old who's never been a full-time starter before has never pitched 170 innings even once through his seven year career. And now at the age 33, we're going to trust him to be a starter for three years and give him like starter money for three. Like it just, Mm -hmm. I don't see him getting that as much as we love him and Jays fans love him. I do think that the age is a factor. The innings pitched history is a factor I, I 100% agree money. with you. I do truly believe that there is going to be a lot of interest in Ross Stripling. Of course. I think that the deal we see Ross get is something a lot more along the lines of probably three years between 28 and 32 million, right That's around that 10 thinking. million a year yeah. act. Um, so to offer him 18 million for one year, I, I don't think there's any way that the Blue Jays actually do it. But it is wild to think that he has done enough this year and over the last couple of years that that question, even though I'm well aware that that's not what this front office is going to do, it's not a complete insane question. There is some value in maybe trying to protect him over one year. I just don't think, especially after watching them not do it with Steven Matz, I think that there's definitely, in my opinion, no way that they do they go that route with Stripling. I think it's far more likely that Jay sit down with him and are like, what does it take for us to keep you for three years? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. Like, uh, you did get some comments. I know a friend of the show, Garth, uh, who's on Long Toss yes. all the time, he commented and said, just offer the man a three-year deal already. Yes. Um yeah, I mean, 
It's uh, interesting to see how that Ross Stripling deal will pan out, but uh, he deserves more money than he's getting. I think mm-hmm. like he's he's making three point eight million dollars this year. We're we're getting our money's worth. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to do. He with is the guy. one of the more intriguing cases going into free agency this year. Not for the amount of money he's going to get, but what he gets offered. What is Ross Stripling worth on the open market in Major League Baseball in 2022? I'm kind of excited to see. Well, I'll tell you what. He's such he's, a unique a unique case. He's at 78 innings right now. Uh, if he's in the starting rotation the rest of the year, he'll, he'll break his season high of innings pitched. But dread deadline a week away, if the Jays add – two starters which isn't impossible to think that we had no. two i think we had one yes there, like there's a chance ross tripling is back in the bullpen by the end of the year for sure so, there is and right. and going into the playoffs that's 100 percent where ross tripling is for sure for sure okay so thanks for the the ross tripling talk there uh from dulch marist and jays all day uh, next two comments are related to long toss. So some feedback that we've gotten. Uh, first one is from the Shumway says, thanks for dropping the guess the salary segment. It just made things way too slow. And Marcus G said, I a thousand percent agree. So we had been doing this uh, for anybody who hasn't seen a long toss where we basically do the first half of the show is topics that Scott and I come up with. And then the second half of the show is topics that the panelists want to talk about. And it was started out as a fun little segment of guests, total money that these players have made. I still think it's fun. Uh, yeah. But when we have a full panel and there's seven yeah. people all guessing how much money key. Mark McGuire made. I mean, as much as it is it, like there are some eye opening numbers when you're like, holy Zach Greinke has made more money than Garrett Cole. Like, yeah, that's wild. Um, but yeah, when you have seven or eight people bidding on it, even five or six, it can just slow things down a bit. So, uh, we do appreciate the feedback and the input. Uh, we take all of the feedback under advisement and, uh, we just stripped it out for the last, uh, last episode, the big panel, it may come back down the road. It may come back in another form, but I think for now we're gonna, we're gonna keep the panel topics as a format but lose the salary guessing game uh in the meantime so mm-hmm. um next one uh comes from scott mccutcheon says the pod the long toss should maybe max out at six on the panel if maxing out at six means uh that if one can't make it and it's five great math by the way uh then max it out at seven but perhaps more is too many with regards to trying to not speak over each other via video chat. So uh, that's related to the last episode we did on Sunday. Uh, we had, I believe, eight mm-hmm. or seven, seven or eight. Um, and there was a few moments of uh, too many people talking. And then yes. a few minutes later, there would be silence because we kind of overcorrected. And I think people realized they talked over and, were more hesitant to jump in. Um, one thing I just want to say with that, and we appreciate the feedback on capping it to a, a limit. We're still working on the format, obviously 25 episodes in still trying to find out what that magic number is. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we've had every size between two and 10 at this point. Uh, Jen and I did a, an episode, just the two of us for two hours. Yes. And that was, that was a grind to get through. Yes. Uh, on Canada Day weekend. That being said, I think one of the biggest factors for this past Sunday and us speaking over each other was that we did have uh, two new panelists first time on the show, uh, which I think they were great, but weren't necessarily, didn't have that uh, familiarity with the format and with other people and didn't have the experience of a group discussion like that. Um, so I think if we saw a panel of five where it was five first timers, you're going to see the same issues. Whereas if we had a panel of eight, but it's all Jen and Joel and Craig and Garth and you and me, like 
it's going to yes. run smoother just by the experience of knowing when to step in and the comfort and the confidence of, of reading an opening and being able to jump in. So I think that was a big Sunday factor. was a little on me as well. I know that being on the road, my internet sometimes isn't as great as I would like it to be. And if I'm lagging even just a little bit behind, I was fired up on Sunday too. So I really was like coming in strong. And I know that I was talking over top of people. But I will say right off uh, right off here, like, Scott, thank you so much for the input. And yep. this is how we're going to make these shows better, is for totally. you, you folks to continue to pass along your comments. We do take them very seriously, and we do really appreciate the input. So feel free to continue to, with constructive criticism, we're fine with it. Now, if you're a dick, we're obviously not going to ignore, or we're going to just ignore it. But, you know, if you're truly trying to help the pod, we do really appreciate it. Yep. Uh, we won't name names, but there have been panelists in the past that we've received feedback on that are like, hey, this guy or girl was great. We need more of him or her. And we've received the opposite, too, where it's like, ah, uh, maybe don't maybe bring, don't bring this them person back, back or yeah. whatever. And, you know, it's all uh, a learning curve and. We're trying to give everybody an opportunity as well. So it's, uh, but we appreciate the feedback. So keep it coming. Uh, we love to hear it. And it, yeah, it's the only way to make this show better. So we appreciate uh, all the feedback from this community. Okay. Um, last thing that I want to get to is Tuesday, draft deadline day. We talked about this briefly before we went live or before we uh, started recording this today. You and I are going to do next mailbag live on Tuesday. Yes. Uh, we're going to extend it, maybe do it a little bit longer uh, than the typical 40 to 50 minutes that a mailbag typically goes. And we are going to do a interact. We'll do some, well, we'll do the standard mailbag format. Yeah. But then we'll also uh, be keeping an eye on trade announcements that come in. Uh, we'll keep an eye on the live chat afterwards and we can kind of hang out. Hopefully there's been a whirlwind of trades over the weekend for us to talk about um, or things, new announcements that are coming in live and we can do our instant reactions to. So um, I know you're not unfortunately able to just sit with me for six hours on, uh, on the deadline day to uh, be live for the whole thing. But my daughter's at her mom's next week. I got nothing yeah. to do anyways. So I am I think I would like to just kind of hang out on the YouTube live stream. Maybe we could see if we can get Joel to hop in for an hour and yeah. Jen to hop in for an hour and Craig, uh, whoever, to hop in for an yes. hour. And, uh, and everybody can kind of just help me keep things going and keep steam. Uh, and we could just kind of hang out all day with the live chat. We can break down uh, new trades that come in talk with the live chat so let us know in the comments i guess is what i'm getting at is this a good idea or is this a stupid waste of time you're like no i'm just gonna get my news from a real source like sportsnet and that's totally fine well yeah. it's totally fine and I, that's probably where i'll be watching it too um but but i know. think it would be fun i think it, it's going to be a massive day there is so much intrigue around this trade deadline there are so many available players that maybe wouldn't be available guys like Juan Soto, guys like Shohei Otani. Like, these aren't yeah. names you would normally hear tossed around no, on a, a trade crazy. deadline. So there is going to be some wild stuff to happen, and I, I love this de idea. I'll 100% be with you a couple hours. We'll okay. see what we can do. Yeah. Very cool. All right, so that's something to look forward to for next Tuesday. Uh, keep an eye on uh, Twitter, Instagram, Discord, and we'll have uh, a formal announcement for what time we're going to go live and stuff like that on Tuesday. Uh, later in the week so there you go okay that is mostly it for mailbag uh we do have two last comments to get to here uh they are related to our new gambling show ah uh, yes so if you uh are watching or listening with the kids or whatever your reasons might be and you're like i don't want to do the gambling stuff uh we left it till the end for the reason so you're welcome to uh tune out give us that thumbs down and uh walk away now uh, appreciate you. We'll see you guys for Friday. Uh, for anybody who's okay with the gambling content, uh, we just had a couple comments related to the gambling show, so we'll get to that. First one comes in from 
uh, just tap for in. So this is uh, our resident Tapia troll. Uh, changes their name and their icon weekly. Uh, it's hilarious every time. Uh, commented boo with about a dozen thumbs down and said selling out in quotes uh, is a common expression for the compromising of a person's integrity, morality, authenticity, or principles in exchange for personal gains such as money. Uh, there's a few thumbs up on that comment, so a few people agreed with uh, that take. I'll jump in here. Please. I mean, that's a bummer. Yep. Apologies. Uh, honestly, apologies that you feel that way. And I know this is this is our Ronald McDonald guy. This is our, I mean, he watches yep. the pod or they watch the pod a lot. Um, they are always comment on everything, yeah. comment on everything, which is really appreciated. They help drive the algorithm. Uh, yeah, it, it's a bummer. I mean, uh, gambling is a divisive subject and I, I totally understand those of you who are not into the fact that we now have bet stamp, a, a gambling sponsor apologies that it, it upsets you. Honestly, I mean, I'll be honest. We're not a punk band. Um, <laughs> I, as for the selling out thing, I am not dead set against gambling. I I really don't feel like I'm compromising my personal morals on this. I totally understand why there are people who are against it, and I I really respect that. I I'm well aware that there are folks out there with gambling addictions, and it has hurt their their livelihood and their family and all of that stuff. There's a there's a really good reason why Adam and I have decided to do a gambling show that's a standalone show that isn't involved in all of our other content. And that is so that you as the listener, you as the viewer, if you choose to not be a part of that, it's really easy to just not click on it. Yep. That's why we save Anything these comments here? for the end. Yeah. Um, I mean, as much as we would love to just have sponsors that are like vegan health food bars and water bottle companies like you, you know at what point is any i mean if the know? sports landscape has shown anything over the last year like i i totally get why people are burned out on the the gambling sponsorship because it's everywhere i just want to point out it's everywhere for a reason right like they're the ones advertising and they're the ones sponsoring stuff <laughs> yeah yeah uh very true i mean if we start coming down on people's vices like, are we not going to take money from Budweiser either? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just at a certain point, people have to be free to make their own terrible decisions in life too. Yeah. And uh, But yeah, we're trying to be respectful of, uh, you know, you don't want to have it in your thing. I mean, go find another podcast or another sports show that doesn't have yeah. sports advertising, but then I guess you're just not going to be watching sports. <laughs> like, Yeah. I mean, sorry if we were the last. One last Steve thought on this. One last thought on this too. I did wish to just point out that BetStamp, they're not a betting site, okay? They're an aggregator, if you will, very similar to Trivago, where they kind of line up all the betting sites and who's giving the best value. So if you're betting, it is actually advantageous to you. But if you're not betting, then don't click on the show, right? Like, yeah, just skip it. Come back on Friday. Come back on Friday. And again, Sunday. we do really appreciate the community's input. Like, there's, it's not like Adam and I just jumped into this without discussing it. We also have been approached by betting sites who just wanted to take commission on when people used the code, the walk off, and we turned those down. Betstamp yep. is giving us actual money. So, you know. Look, I don't want to name names of other shows, but you will see other podcasts out there that just throw up a banner and it's on every one of their episodes and whatever, right? We mm -hmm. could have gone that way. I mean, yes. if we weren't taking the community feedback into account, that's probably what we would have done, right? That is the yes. easiest thing to do is just throw a logo up on everything and then collect an easy paycheck. Like we've added a show. We've taken another chunk of time out of our schedule to make a standalone piece of content that is ignorable if you want to ignore it. So other than this, and this will be the last time that we give you this spiel. <laughs> well, this will be the last time that we address the gambling stuff on mailbag too. 
Yeah. Any future comments related to gambling, we'll save for the gambling for the show gambling that we're going to do on Wednesdays. That being said, we appreciate your uh, your input and your insight and your frustration. I mean, I, I hear you, but I think to say that we're sellouts and to take this moral elitist stance on let's just fuck off with that for real like well all... you know what though adam we wouldn't have our yachts without taking these big I know. sponsorships so i know we, that's the thing is we were getting <laughs> by just fine but i needed more is what it was it came down to that i just needed a second yacht a second adam needed yacht. his second yacht yeah. <laughs> okay yachties we'll, be we'll, yacht we'll you know how it is all right last one uh comes in from northern grower positive comment on our gambling uh show says i love it i like how aware you guys are of your fans i'm still signing up asap thanks boys keep up the good work and we did have a few comments uh related to that i know dulce Morris mentioned one as well it was just like do what you got to do to keep the lights on we appreciate you cool like that's all we can ask if you don't want to watch it you don't want to watch it it is what it is um love you anyways so that's true. That's this community blows my mind every single week. I don't know what we've done to deserve it, but uh, we appreciate all of you. Very cool. Uh, very good stuff. Great community. Great mailbag, as always. Uh, we'll see you Friday. That's right. Okay. Right, oh, by the out. way, if you're listening to this and you've waited all the way to the end here and you're in Charlottetown, PEI, I have a show at Poor House on Thursday. Come check it out. Get that free beer if you mention the walk-off. <laughs> Very good. All right. Do you want to mention the uh, socials and we'll wrap it up? Follow us on Twitter at Walk Off Podcast. On Instagram, the Walk Off Podcast. There is going to be a link in the show notes for Discord. That is always free. And speaking of links in the show notes, you can also check out that Spencer Horowitz.